hey, you're back. In the last video, we talked about scroll triggers, start and end properties. And we're basically going to pick up here where we left off. But before we do so, I just want to point out a few little changes that I made. As you can see, I made the markers a little bit bigger. And if I show you the code, you can see that I changed the positions of the start and the end markers. Also, I brought back this X property so that when the animation is triggered, that box with the class of square will move 700 pixels to the right. Let's take a look at how that works in the browser right now. So when I move down now, we should see that box move 700 pixels to the right once it hits the scroller start. There we go. Now, I wonder what would happen if I scrolled back up and tried that one more time. Hmm, it's just kind of sitting there where it was when we left off. And that makes me feel a little bit sad. Doesn't it make you feel sad? I mean, I want that animation to happen again. What's going on? That's it. All right, well, we can fix that. That's where the topic of this video comes into play. And that's called toggle actions. Let's find out how they work. So I'm back here in VS Code. And if you haven't checked out the previous videos, you might want to take a look at the index.html file here on the left. Notice that we basically have two divs going on. We have the first one here. We have the second one here. And actually we have an inner div inside of that second div. And that one is the one that has the class of square. And that's that box that we saw moving from the left side of the screen 700 pixels to the right. But I'm going to close out of this index.html file to make some more room on the screen. And there we go. We just have our app.js file. Let me make it a little bit larger. Now, in order to use toggle actions, we need to add a toggle actions property to the scroll trigger object. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to write toggle actions like that. And the value of toggle actions is going to be a string. So I'll put my quotation marks. Don't want to forget my comma at the end. And the way that toggle actions work is that it takes four different keywords which are going to be four different actions that will be triggered by four different events. So let's look at those keywords and I think you'll see what I mean. We can start with the defaults. The default is play, none, none, and none. Let's just save and go to the browser and make sure that we still have the default action going on. So when I scroll now, we should see the same thing happen. There we go. And then if I try to scroll again, it should just be sitting there, which it does. Okay, cool. So what I want to do with the toggle actions is I want to make this animation actually restart every time that on enter event is triggered. So let's look at toggle actions and see how we can do that. First of all, let me drop down to a new line. And on this line, I'm just going to make a comment. And I'm going to write the events that each of these keywords or actions correspond to. So the first one is called on enter, and that would correspond to play. Let's just make some more space here. Okay, the second one is going to be on leave. The third one is on enter back. And the fourth one is called on leave back. So I'm just spacing it out like this right now, just so we can see which action corresponds to which event. So the first one right now, on enter, is corresponding to play. What that means is when we scroll up, when the top of the trigger, which is the top of this box, once it hits the scroller start, that's going to trigger the on enter event, and the animation is going to play. So what we can do, instead of saying play on enter, we can say restart. Okay, and now let's go back, and let's see what happens. So we scroll down. And once the trigger start hits the scroller start, okay, it plays, the animation plays. But then let's try it again and see what happens. So now we come back up. And there we go. It goes back to the beginning and restarts. You see one more time? There we go. Before we take a look at some of the other cool things you can do with toggle actions, I'm actually going to make a slight modification to my CSS because I want to get rid of this annoying salmon color for the second div. I'm getting kind of tired of salmon. Let's close that. Let's see how things look now. There, I think that'll be better. Now, why don't we look at the on leave event here? 
So another option that we can do for toggle actions is we can do reverse. So we've got restart on enter and we've got reverse on leave. Now in order for this to work, I can only have one space between these keywords. So I'm going to go ahead and nudge this over. All right, so now restart and reverse should work. So let's take a look at what happens. Start scrolling down. Okay, and here's on enter. And then here's on leave and it goes back. So what you can see is that this range here from scroller start to scroller end, this is defining where on enter and on leave are. So let's try it one more time. So when we hit scroller start, on enter should trigger that restart. And then when we hit scroller end, that should trigger the reverse and it does. Nice. Let's try a different keyword for on leave. Another one we can do is pause. Let's give it a whirl. So I'll save and go back to the browser. And here we go. Scroller start restarts it and then when we hit scroller end, it just pauses. Let's try it one more time. I'll go a little faster this time. So restart. There we go. I scrolled a little bit faster because I wanted to show you that it does indeed pause. So now we can try something for on enter back. For on enter back, let's try another keyword. Let's try resume. And again, I'm going to have to nudge this back. All right, so you know resume is for on enter back here. So let's save and let's try it one more time. All right, so we start scrolling down. We hit scroller start, it restarts. Scroll around, it pauses. And now watch what happens as I scroll back up and we come back into that scroller zone. Notice it resumes. So that's that on enter back event. Let's try it one more time so you can see it. Restart, pause. All right, now when we come back down and resume. And now last but not least is the final event, which is called on leave back. So let's try a different action for this one. Let's try reset. And again, let's get rid of all this space and let's go back to the browser. So restart, pause, and then as we come back in, resume and reset. So what you can see is that as the trigger element came out of this zone here, as it dropped past the scroller start, that triggered that on leave back event and reset the square back to the left side of the screen. And then another action we can try for that on leave back is we can try complete. And by the way, you can try any of these actions for any of these events. Oh snap. So like I could have had restart for on enter and then I could have had maybe reverse for on leave. And then on enter back, maybe I could have had pause and on leave back, I could have had reset. So you can kind of mix and match here. And actually what I want to do is I'm going to make the duration a little bit longer. So I have a little bit more time to show you all four of these actions here. I'm also going to make the value for the X property. I'm going to make that 1000. I just want to make the settings a little bit more extreme so that it's obvious to you what's going on here. All right, so let's give it a try. Scroll down, restart, pause, then we come back in, we resume, and then complete. So you saw when we came down past the scroller start again, this box kind of jumped because we told it to complete at that point. Let's try it one more time. Restart, pause, resume, and complete. So I tried to go a little faster so you could see more of a jump to complete. So what I'll do is I'll make another comment and I'll put in all the different toggle actions that you can use. So we have play, pause, resume, reverse, restart, reset, complete, and then none. So you can use none when you just don't want any action to be triggered on an event. So thanks for checking out this video on scroll trigger toggle actions. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel 
so you can be notified of new videos. See you next time.